Hi everyone. So today I thought I would do another year in retrospect 2018 video and I hope you're not sick of them yet because I feel like that's all I've seen in my feed. Best of 2018, worst of 2018. But I really wanted to do this video because I wanted to talk about videos that I watched last year that kind of moved me, that changed my perspective. And I've chosen kind of 10 videos that really did impact me in one way or another, um, which sounds really dramatic. Obviously this is not an exhaustive list because it's only 10 that I'm talking about, eight makeup and two kind of like bonus non-makeup related ones. I wanna do this more frequently because I feel like I don't really talk about content creators or videos that I like to watch. And I feel like I wanted to do a shout out video for a while, but I didn't want to do it in a way that, I wanted to do, be more specific. Like I wanted to be more specific and talk about the actual content itself and why I liked it. Let's get started. I'm gonna go in chronological order because I like, I love lists, but I also like like an order to the list. So I'm gonna start off with videos that were uploaded from the start of the year all the way up to the end, you know, a timeline from January to December. So the first video I wanna talk about is one that Lisa Eldridge uploaded on the 18th of January, 2018, and that was the Buy Nothing makeup tutorial. Now, Lisa Eldridge is a well-known makeup artist. I've been watching her almost since I started watching YouTube, honestly, and she's been around for a long time. But the reason why I really enjoyed this video was because she just puts on makeup without mentioning brands, without mentioning specific products. And I feel like at that point in time, that was really refreshing because YouTube has sort of in a way just, it feels like sometimes you're just watching ads, affiliate and discount codes are pushed all the time. Products are pushed all the time. You know, it's all about the product and the brand. You know, I don't necessarily feel like you always have to buy something in order to follow a tutorial. You might have something you know, similar in your collection already. And I, I did really enjoy that because she didn't push products in that tutorial. She also did it because she was also feeling the fatigue of constant new product releases. And so she was doing that to just enjoy her collection. And um, that's a goal of mine this year as well. On March 18, Beauty News uploaded a video called How Old Is Strawberry Net Makeup? And that was one that really was eye-opening for me. They basically bought a whole bunch of makeup from Strawberry Net, which is a online site which has discounted makeup, some stuff that is no longer, you know, available on the counters, it's discontinued, so it's kind of like old stock. And I personally, myself, used to purchase a lot from Strawberry Net because I found that the discounts were quite significant to, you know, prices in the store. However, lately, I mean, it's been years since I've purchased from them because I've noticed that um, it's not as cheap as it used to be. When they purchase all the products, they checked the code on the makeup product itself to see how old it was and when it was manufactured. And a lot of the products were very old. Some of them were so old that you wouldn't want to put it on your eye or on your face or anything like that. Now people have said, you know, obviously they're unopened products. There's the risk of bacteria infection is very low. Are you willing to take the risk? Personally, I'm not willing to take the risk because what I realized is Good skin is a privilege. It's not a given. Since watching that video, it's kind of made me think about, you know, places like that, which sell makeup for a discount. What is the reason for that? And a lot of the time it's because the stock is super old. When things go on sale and I, I sold 50% of the, the retail price, what's the catch? And oftentimes that is the catch. They're getting rid of old stock. There's so many factors involved, you know, how they are storing it in the warehouse. There is the fact that old makeup doesn't tend to perform as well as new fresh makeup. But yeah, I mean, like I said, it's up to you. It's your skin, it's your face. I'm not gonna risk it on my face because I, I enjoy, I enjoy my face. It's a weird thing to say, but you know. Next video I wanna talk about is one that La Muffin Beauty Science uploaded. Her name is Michelle. She's a chemistry PhD. She titled it, How Does Olaplex Work? I found this to be a super interesting video. At that point, I was already using Olaplex. I've been using Olaplex for a very long time because I have Super dyed hair, it's permed, it's bleached, it's dyed, it's gone through all sorts of crap, which is why my hair isn't as healthy as it could be, but it's a lot healthier thanks to Olaplex. Since Olaplex has gone on the market, all my other hair products have just like not been relevant because Olaplex works so well. It was hard to pick one video from her channel because a lot of them are super informative. She's super thorough, she talks about 
the actual science behind why a product works or why it doesn't work. She also does a series on her Instagram called Skincare Myths Busted. I won't pretend that I understand 100% of what is going on sometimes. Sometimes I have to watch the video twice to kind of be like, okay, I mean, I studied chemistry in school, but I'm not a chemistry PhD, so there's the difference. So yeah, I found her video really interesting, kind of reinforced why I actually spend like 50 bucks on Olaplex every three months. The next video is kind of a juicy one. This video came out around the time where James Charles tweeted something like, you know, how influencers don't get paid for negative reviews. Yeah, I, I can't remember what happened. I can't remember exactly what went down to make him say that. It might have been something to do with Morphe and the Jaclyn Hill palettes. I can't remember. But anyway, I feel like so much drama has happened this year that I just can't keep a track of it. And I don't. But I found this video to be super interesting. And this one was released by Pretty Pastel Please. She's an Aussie YouTuber. And the video was titled, Getting Paid $85,000 for a Negative Review, The Secret World of Influencers Part 1. I found this video to be super interesting because she talks from a perspective of being an influencer and also someone that works in marketing. Um, and basically she debunked the whole thing that, you know, negative reviews aren't a thing because actually it does happen in the influencer world. In that video, basically she talks about apps like Fame, Bit and Tribe and she gives kind of vague examples because obviously she don't want to get sued um, of how companies can request for reviews, but also pay influencers slightly more for making comparisons, possibly negative comparisons. Basically, she was saying that if you do make comparisons and if you potentially trash a brand that is the brand's competitor, then you could get paid more money, um, which I found really interesting. I had no idea. I'm very naive when it comes to this because I do not work in marketing. I think in that video or one of the parts, she also talked about influencers, particular influencers, that have been paid by a company to review another brand's product and potentially give them a negative review. An example of this was, you know, Manny MUA getting paid by, I can't remember the name of the lash brand, to review another brand's lashes and he did not give us such a favorable review on that. And I just think the fact that these kind of things do not have to be disclosed and aren't disclosed is super, super dodgy. I kind of felt like, you know, people often are skeptical when it comes to positive reviews, but now it's kind of made me skeptical when it comes to negative reviews, mostly by bigger YouTubers. That's exactly why I don't watch a lot of the bigger YouTubers. I don't necessarily believe a lot of them are disclosing sponsorships, are disclosing for paid reviews, um, and I don't think it's right. If you do want to hear about her perspective, I highly recommend watching that because my mind was blown. I don't know. My mind was blown. So in October, Makeup Struggles released a video um, in her eyeshadow palettes I would redesign series. Now she did start the series in 2017 and I think she did two more videos last year. But I really enjoy this series. It's one of my favorite ones to watch just because I find that I enjoy watching other people come up with different color combinations and kind of take a release and make it better. And personally, I really want to do this series myself. I just have to figure out how to do it logistically because sometimes I feel like you know all these palette releases are kind of sometimes off the mark an example of that the 27 palette by melt I feel like that could have been redesigned to have different colors in it rather than 12 shades of very similar tones I also think it's a clever way to do an anti haul because you know if you are critically looking at a palette and there are colors in there that you know you won't use, you don't enjoy, you didn't think was a very rational choice to put it in the palette and you have potential dupes for them, then it stops you from purchasing it. But I do think that it is a really, really clever idea for a series and I've really enjoyed watching her come up with different color combinations for palettes. They need to get her on board with picking out shades because some of the releases that come out are absolute trash. Brands like Benefit, Tarte, I could redesign all those palettes. They're just terrible, I'm sorry, but they're bad. Another video that was uploaded in October that I really enjoyed was one that Smacy uploaded and that was the one look, two speeds, is blending overrated? Probably. And I really enjoyed that experiment. Basically, on one side of her face, she limited herself to spending 20 minutes on it and the other half, 
I think was an hour and a half. And it was interesting to see how the results differed depending on how much effort and time you put in. Personally, I think she did awesome on both sides. I think it goes to show that you don't necessarily have to spend an hour and a half on makeup to, to make your makeup look good, which obviously differs, you know, if you, level of skill, but it kind of made me feel better because to be honest, I, I very rarely spend 20 minutes more. I know that my eyeshadow when I'm looking at close-ups is not always super blended and super perfect, but it's good enough, especially because I'm not like, you know, I'm not on TV, I'm not on the red carpet. So it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. Pro's principle, you know, like 80% of the results come from 20% effort or something like that. I feel like that is really, that's the rule that my life goes by. I feel like that's how I live my life because I know I'm not a perfectionist and I know I'm not gonna get everything perfect. Like I said, it was a really interesting video to watch and um, I really enjoyed it. Towards the latter part of the year, Samantha Ravendell released a video titled no more PR. Samantha Ravendell is a content creator that I have watched for a very long time on and off, but I feel like her content's gotten better and better. And I think part of that is because she has kind of decided to play things by her own rules. One of them is to not accept PR. It was enlightening to hear her perspective on the fact that PR creates so much waste and that she would get boxes and boxes and boxes of it. And because companies want to compete on what gets featured on a content creator's channel, they make these extravagant, large, you know, PR packages that, you know, in the end of the day is gonna go into the trash. That was one of the reasons why she decided not to accept PR and also because she was saying that she no longer feels that excited about makeup. When you're not spending your own coin on a purchase, it doesn't mean as much, unless it's something that was really on my wish list. So I can sort of see where she's coming from in that sense. I noticed that pattern in a lot of YouTubers who've been around for like three, four, five years, that a lot of them aren't really excited about makeup anymore. And I think this is a really good start to kind of getting that excitement back and that passion for makeup back. And I think that's why her channel has has gotten better and better is because she's doing things that she wants to do. She also mentioned the fact that she's not a review channel. So, I mean, if she was a review channel like Tati and she was reviewing makeup all the time, it would make sense to get PR packages so that she could talk about it, review it, demo it. Because she wasn't, you know, she's not reviewing all, everything, a lot gets given away. She's someone I really enjoy watching. She's got a great sense of humor and I think moves like that and the fact that she's so open about it has really made me enjoy watching her videos again. Last beauty video that I wanna talk about is by Hannah Louise Poston. She's someone on YouTube that I have only been following for I think maybe a couple of months, six months tops. And I feel like she's just grown so much. She's very insightful, very articulate. She released a video called How My No Year Changed My Makeup Collection. For those of you who don't know her, she has been doing a no buy for the whole of 2018. And I found that really interesting to hear about her experience. But this particular video I found very, very eye-opening because it kind of made me think about how I think about my makeup as well. In that video, she basically talks about how she views her makeup in three categories being short-term staples, long-term staples and long-term pleasures. And I just found that to be a really interesting way to categorize one's makeup because I definitely can resonate with that. Like mascara, as you are saying, because they don't last for a very long time and they go off so quickly, you know, one every three months, it's not necessarily worth for her to be purchasing a $50 mascara when, you know, it would need to be replaced so frequently. And then long-term staples being ones that like a, a blush or a bronzer, um, if she had only one in her collection, that lasts two years. So that's kind of, even though it might be like a $70 blush, if it's lasting for two years and it's the only one you have, then it's kind of worth the money. And then obviously long-term pleasures being ones that you will kind of never run out of, but will kind of just enjoy as something that is a luxury in one's collection because you know, you're never gonna get your full money's worth. It's never gonna run out within that time frame. Well, I know I've got lots of eyeshadow palettes and I'm never gonna use them all but by the time they expire. So it is, those are long-term pleasures for me also. Just go and watch her video because she explains everything a lot more clearly than I do. So the last I wanna mention are ones in the non-beauty category. The first being from Justine Leconte. Um, ASOS, are their clothes worth the money? I just love that series. She's done one on Uniqlo as well. And I, I really hope she does it on more brands. She's a clothing designer and she talks about clothes from a technical point of view. Basically, she bought a whole bunch of 
clothes from ASOS and she analyzes it from a quality perspective. How well it's made, does it meet the, the same description as what it was advertised as on the website? Um, and she tries it on and shows you exactly what's wrong with it, not just try it on and be like, this looks great. Sometimes it's really frustrating watching clothing videos because a lot of it is unhelpful. I'm sorry to say, I find that a lot of them are really unhelpful because I feel like when it comes to fast fashion, it's all about just trying it on, styling it. It doesn't matter about, does it fit well? Is it gonna last me? She talks about clothes like she knows clothes and because she does know clothes. So I really enjoy her. And if you like that kind of content, I highly recommend watching that series and her channel in general because she talks about how to look for good quality clothes, what are the characteristics of a well-made clothing item, things like that. I also enjoy her trend analysis on different seasons and the Met Gala videos that she does where she kind of picks out her favorite ones. I just really enjoy them. I really enjoy her videos. She's definitely one of my favorite non-beauty channels. And last one I want to talk about is a fairly recent discovery as well. When I did my vlog for Sydney, I wanted, to, I was like, how do I vlog? I have no idea how to vlog. So we basically went to YouTube and typed in like how to vlog. We watched a whole bunch of videos, most of them, I didn't find very useful. And then we stumbled across Peter McKinnon. He's a photographer by trade. So his shots are gorgeous. He did a video called how to vlog with no ideas. And in that video, he basically kind of shows you his day and how he kind of goes from there. He's just an absolute genius. I don't think most people could vlog the way he does, but he's got a really great eye and I just love his B-roll shots. I just think he, he creates such beautiful videos to watch. And I'm a person that doesn't usually watch vlogs. He gives good practical advice and he's a real pleasure to watch. So if you like that kind of thing, I highly recommend watching him. So those are the 10 videos that I watched last year that made me think, that broadened my horizon, that educated me in some way, that changed my perspective in some way, or kind of just expanded on it. Obviously this is not an exhaustive list, it was only 10 videos. And I feel like had I started writing this list earlier, I probably would have included more but these were kind of the ones that on the top of my head really resonated with me. Um, and again, I plan on doing more of these because I watch so much YouTube, it's embarrassing. And I watch a lot of content creators, especially small ones that I do want to kind of highlight. Um, so expect another one from me, maybe in another six months time, but let me know in the comments below what videos you loved watching last year so I can go check them out. And I hope yeah, you enjoyed watching this. If you want to see more of my face, please subscribe and I hope to catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching.